Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the weekly chart of silver, and you can see the MACD has crossed the zero line. Uh, we had a, a pretty serious fallback, but you can see that we've already recovered most of that, and the MACD has actually got one of those um, very bullish signs is that it's uh, this kind of... We'll try to zoom in here. Uh, it, it's kind of one of these um, breakdown failures. You can see that what, what the MACD has done is it has failed to cross. Uh, so it very well could rise really quickly towards that $20 price. That would not surprise me at all. Again, I pointed out the resistance here in this area. But uh, twenty uh, a, a rapid run to twenty dollars would not be at all surprising. But I'm not going to spend time on silver tonight because this video from Jim Willie I have found to be so disturbing, and uh, it's just one of those things that when you have these things come out in the alternative community, the alternative media. If you remember, we followed Bob Chapman and posted Bob Chapman for the longest time. And uh, I had serious doubts as to whether Bob Chapman was compromised. I have serious doubts as to whether Chuck Misler is compromised. Um, how do you become compromised with your uh, information that you provide to the public? Well, one of the very, very dangerous things that one can do is have sources because if you're a reporter of course you have sources and you have traditionally we've had laws that reporters can protect their sources and things like that a lot of that has gone by the wayside with the recent anti-terrorism laws and all the stuff that's come into effect since 911 but I'm going to be looking at this Jim Willie interview because it's it's really it's disturbing and it's also saddening for me to to hear Jim Willie go on really I can't describe it as anything else but a drunken tirade against cryptocurrencies which I I don't know whether he doesn't understand them or whether he understands them and is compromised. So before we get to that I want to make it very clear to all the members, I'm going to reveal my sources. And it's important for me to share that because anybody that has sources for information, they not only are passing on information to the public that they're getting secretly, but they're also uh, involved with people that have potentially very questionable uh, motives and it, it's just very hard to judge where people are from and what they're doing so there are a lot of traps out there uh, if you follow the channel for long enough you know that I have steadfastly avoided those sorts of traps those those traps are all around on the internet and especially in the alternative community now I'm gonna take you to the Bitcoin chart because the the chart on Bitcoin is clearly uh, much more definitive than the charts of gold and silver. Uh, I've drawn in one one line here, one simple line, and that's just simply the uh, top line of this pennant that Bitcoin has formed. Now this happens to be the uh, Chinese yuan, and I pointed out before that uh, you that the Huobi price had led the market significantly and then uh, there was a hundred dollar difference at one point but now everything's caught up so you can see that in China we're at 582 in uh, America or Bitfinex maybe Hong Kong I think it's based at, we're at 574 an eight dollar difference not too bad we're at 563 in Russia and Bitstamp 574 so fairly consistent just about all of these charts, we'll just click on some of these. We'll click on Bitfinex and show you that the, the formations are pretty much similar. 
uh, it, it's clearly, in fact, this BTC Russian chart uh, is even a better pennant formation than any of the others. So they're all forming this very, very clear pennant. If we go out to the three day, we can see that Bitcoin is now making an, uh, an attempt to get through the congestion that existed on the massive run up. And it was massive. It was unbelievable. You can see there, it's a $63 price, and it's uh, it, it went up to 1200 It's not on this chart, but it's basically a 20-fold gain. So the Bitcoin chart is very, very bullish, and that leads us to this interview with Jim Willie. Now, why Jim Willie said the things he said in this interview with Elijah, Again, this is this is only for members. Hopefully, this information isn't released publicly, because uh, you know I I don't have anything against Jim Willie, but uh, this is just simply a bizarre interview. So let's start off. Listen to the interview, and I'm going to try to break it down, and then I'm going to go in and comment about um, just some of the crazy stuff that that goes on in this interview. So bear with me here. It was someone with a direct contact in the U.S. Navy in the Persian Gulf. All right. Well, this next viewer wants to know, what is the possibility of implementing a digital world currency instead of a gold standard? Well, this is your, your cryptocurrency Bitcoin question. Um, what's the possibility? <sighs> Nothing, zero, nil, zippo. Digital currency? Gosh, that's as stupid as the negative interest rates in banks. Okay, so you have to remember that Jim Willie is a PhD in statistics. Now, I've explained how encryption works. And it's not really complex. I've explained before that if you're anybody who produces YouTube videos, you know that you get an address when you create a new YouTube video. And it's a series of letters and numbers, capitals and lowercase, and maybe some exclamation points. You've got about roughly 64 characters that you can deal with. And most of the YouTube video addresses are really only about maybe 10 or 12 characters because uh, it's the nature of uh, exponential math and uh, these and that's really at the heart of uh, cryptocurrencies and cryptography uh, it's the way the universe was built it's the way god created things it's it, it's the nature of math and so cryptography has completely changed the world it's it's allowed for secret communication, but it's also allowed for the emergence of cryptocurrencies. And it's, it's shocking and surprising and really not believable to me that Jim Willie doesn't understand anything about cryptocurrencies. But I'm going to let him go on his rant and then try to counter some of the points he makes. And it really doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a last gasp guffaw. Are you kidding me? A digital currency? I, I haven't heard something as stupid as that being embraced widely in a long, long time. I don't care if Sweden is well along. Sweden is your hidden extension to Nazi Switzerland. I had a, a very interesting comment given to me from a client from, Swiss, from Sweden. This was about two months ago, and he said, Jim, I have some news for you. Uh, Sweden was not neutral in World War II. They were declared neutral. They were very pro-Nazi. But they So let me stop this here. Does, does anybody really know what he's talking about? Uh, and doesn't he sound a little bit drunk here? I'm, I'm not going to criticize him for that. I've done interviews after, you know, I've had a glass of wine or whatever. Sometimes I have a couple glasses of wine. But uh, is he confusing Sweden and Switzerland? What is he talking about? And what does this have to do with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies? 
They fooled the United States and England and Western Europe, the uh, the the uh, alliance. They fooled Eisenhower and all those people into thinking that they were neutral when they were working behind the scenes, supporting the, the German Nazis, supporting with loans uh, to the the industries and factories that were making you know aircraft and. And, and V-1, V-2 missiles, and, and a lot of things, tanks and ships, submarines. The Swedes were very much involved in that. So I don't care that Sweden is well along in digital currency. I So I looked up news for Sweden and digital currencies. Uh, the The most recent news article I could find that talked about this issue was an article about Sweden regulating digital currencies and then also Switzerland. You can see here, this is an article about Switzerland and their financial market authority that has put in regulations about cryptocurrencies. And I'm, I'm not going to go into this. And I really don't research much of this anymore. Because, as I pointed out so many times, cryptocurrencies already exist. Uh, they're already a success. Um, whether or not a government decides to create its own cryptocurrency, well, we can go to the WorldCoin Index here, and you can see, I've pointed out many times, uh, we'll do them by market cap. You can see that Bitcoin's up there at $9 billion. Ethereum's over a billion dollars. Litecoin, I have a lot of those. They're... Uh, 200 million dollars uh, in the scheme of things that's not that much but again this is all independent it already exists it's already happening so it's hard to even understand what he's talking about uh, governments getting into this space is like joining the party late these things already exist there's nothing they can do about them we've got storage coin at 50 million dollars Dash is $50 million market cap. This new list, $46 million. Um, there's just a whole ton of them. There's literally uh, pages and pages and pages. There's 100 on the first page. The market cap of them is now about $11.8 billion. We hovered around $9 billion for the longest time. And then we took a surge with the most recent Bitcoin rally. So honestly, I really don't know what he's talking about here. And he, he's really not even talking about uh, cryptocurrencies. He's just kind of rambling and babbling about, um, about Switzerland and Sweden. I, I point to the, uh, the huge cash market out there. Uh, it, it's a lot more than, than just hot dog vendors. Uh, it's it's bribery to politicians they're not going to want that to be done with digital cash are they that's easily traced no that's that's a ridiculous argument now bitcoin has a public blockchain and you can see who sent money to whom but you really don't know who the address belongs to uh, and a lot of the cryptocurrencies, there are many, Black Coin and others, that have incorporated uh, anonymity. And it's not that difficult to put anonymity with Bitcoin itself. But there are also new coins coming out that have anonymity built in. So I really don't know what he's talking about here. It's actually the perfect mechanism to bribe politicians and hide the trail. There's always going to be drugs in our human society because people are weak. And, you know, that included me when I was age 19. People were weak. They were susceptible. And sometimes they were just so depressed they wanted something to change their emotional makeup. Drugs are going to be paid for, but not in digital currency. Of course drugs can be paid for in digital currency. If you've studied the history of the Silk Road and Dread Pirate Roberts, his arrest. Um, the FBI agents that were involved in that bust actually took $100,000 uh, 
worth of Bitcoin bribes. They ended up going to prison themselves. Uh, it's a perfect mechanism to make trades in uh, illegal drugs. I, I really have no idea what he's talking about. Gambling is done, like in, in Vegas and Atlantic City. They might take digital currency, but I doubt it. Now, who has to gamble in Vegas and Atlantic City? We've already seen Las Vegas lose a large percentage of their gambling revenues. If you remember, maybe 10 or 20 years ago, Las Vegas tried to remake itself as a kind of Disney type destination because uh, people like Steve Wynn and many others saw the writing on the wall that there would be a sort of distribution of gambling. Uh, we have Macau in, in uh, China, we have places all around the world and of course there's no question that cryptocurrencies are going to completely revolutionize um, online gambling. All you have to have is a cryptocurrency that's untraceable and you have to have a jurisdiction where they accept a cryptocurrency and don't require your identification. Uh, I've covered on the Bitcoin channel, which I don't do videos for because I don't have time, but there are various sites. They're not very large right now, but at some point they'll be extremely large where you just simply deposit a certain amount of any cryptocurrency and you play your games. So everything he's saying, it's the exact opposite of what he's saying. And we're going to talk about why this sort of thing happens, but let's finish. Because there are a lot of people out there who gamble and don't want their wives or husbands to know about it. So Atlantic City and Vegas are not going <laughs> to, they're not going to get in their way if they want to use cash. Okay, there's a lot of fence. I'm looking at notes because I've been here before. There's a lot of fencing of stolen goods. They're not going to want digital currency to be used to pass on the stolen goods. Again, who is they? What is he talking about? Um, cryptocurrencies are perfectly suited for anonymous transactions. They actually open up all of these things. I'm not saying I'm in favor of these things, but the, the ability is already there. People are, are developing these technologies right now. Uh, there's no question that encryption allows not only for untraceable communications worldwide, and again, let me re-emphasize re that a person who is a PhD in statistics, that this person cannot understand the revolutionary nature of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, cryptographic virtual currencies. I can't believe that he doesn't understand this. There's prostitution. They're not going to want digital currency to pay for prostitution. The entire black market, smuggling, cross borders. I have a, a, a person I know who's involved with, with, with some smuggling of Nicaraguan jewelry. They put it in lower elements of trucks and whatever, cross the border, doesn't get caught. Okay. Again, so... Here's another reference that Jim Willie's making about a source that he has. Now, I, I don't have time to analyze it, but why would you be smuggling jewelry out of Nicaragua, in or out? Why do you have to smuggle jewelry? Uh, is there a regulation? Is it made of gold? I don't know. He's not clear on this. But again, a cryptocurrency allows you to defeat capital controls. It allows you to send, I can't believe that I have to explain this again and again and again, that cryptocurrencies allow any two people in the entire world who have computers to exchange wealth and with just a little bit of effort to do it anonymously. I really honestly don't know even know what his point is it's paid for not in digital currency so digital currency could come about if there's no crime in the world and how stupid is that 
That's all I have to say. Hope okay, I'm so good. I'm going to end it there. He, He's on some kind of drunken rant. I really don't even know what he's saying. But I'm going to finish off here to try to point out to you that it's very, very dangerous to have sources. Now, Jim Willie has said a number of things that are kind of shocking recently. He admitted in one public interview that he was molested by a Catholic priest. He's bragged about in other interviews how he has, I'm not going to use the word abused, but he has used whores in various countries. And uh, he's kind of proud of that fact. That's that's really, frankly, it's sad. And uh, I have to say that the only conclusion I can draw from this is that he has been compromised. And uh, don't get me wrong, I love Jim Willie. He's a great guy. But uh, like I said, uh, I'm going to reveal my sources. And uh, these are my sources. I have two sources. My first source is charts. What I look at is what the price is. Now, a lot of the members have disagreed with me about the partnership between Jimmy Rogers and George Soros. I've studied Jimmy Rogers for many, many years and other traders listen to what they've said and try to emulate what they do. I'm not a very good trader, but uh, I, I have followed the advice of those who believe that markets will tell you their direction. This pennant formation for me is the most important formation because there's actual reasons why these type of things form. So my first source, my most reliable source behind, actually my second source, is markets, prices, what happens. My most reliable source, of course, is going to be the Word of God, what God says. Now, if anything disagrees with the Word of God, then I know it's wrong because I know the Word of God is right. So I'm just going to show you a couple of verses here. Uh, The first verse I'm going to show you is a verse from Genesis. And this was a instance, uh, you'll have to read it for yourself, it's from Genesis 14. And this was an instance, and again, I believe that everything in the Bible is historical fact. It is more factual than any book you can read in any school. It's more factual than any encyclopedia, any Wikipedia, anything. This is literal history. Every single word and jot and tittle and name and date and everything here is literal. Now, this is a history of Abraham, who chased after a group of kings who ended up capturing Lot, who was uh, living in Sodom. This is before the destruction of Sodom. And what happened was that Abraham formed an army and he uh, ended up conquering those kings, um, reclaiming all of the people who had been captured and saving Lot. But this is a very, very interesting uh, verse that talks about what happened when um, Abraham was confronted with making a compromise. And this is what happened. This is verse 21 in Genesis 14. And the king of Sodom, which could be a representative of Satan, said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abraham rich." save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eshal, Mamre, let them take their portion. So what does this verse mean? This verse means that Abraham refused to compromise. He was not willing to take one penny from the king of Sodom, who 
of course, is a representative of Satan. So that's a very, very important point. This is the, the high standard that you must maintain, that I have maintained, that I do not believe in taking rewards from the world system. Now, the next verse I'm going to read you is what happens when someone has a source, but that source is not a person who has a claim on you. It's not a person who traps you in a video of you committing some sin with some prostitute or committing adultery against your wife or uh, participating in some satanic coven or something like that, but it's a person who has a source who is God. In other words, the fact is revealed by God. It's revealed just by either revelation or understanding. And there is no compromise in that situation. And this is a verse that perfectly explains that. This is 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, and this is the history of Elisha, who um, w was uh, the prophet who followed Elijah and asked for a double portion and was granted that. Now, this is what happened with the king of Syria starting at verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall, my, shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him of and warned him of and saved himself there, not once, nor twice. This happened many times. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants, and he said to them, Will ye not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. So the king of Syria sent an army, and they surrounded the city of Dothan. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said to him alas my master how shall we do and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them and elisha prayed and said lord i pray thee open his eyes that he may see and the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. And he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with the sword and with thy bow? set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared a great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more in to the land of Israel. So there is a victory by Elisha with the power of the Lord, a defeat, a permanent defeat for the bands of Syria, and it was done simply by relying on information from the Lord. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's a very, very dangerous thing to have sources. 
uh, if your source is the Lord, you are protected. But if you have sources, if you compromise, if you have sin that they've recorded, if you are involved with them, then they have you. You're compromised. They own you. And it, it has been something that the Lord has warned me from a very young age that you do not take even a shoe latchet from these wicked world sources. And uh, so those are my sources, the charts and the word of God. Hopefully that's a lesson that people can understand because uh, Jim Willie has now been compromised. I don't know the extent of it, but uh, it's obvious that he, to me, at least in my opinion, he's been given orders that uh, he should come out against cryptocurrencies. Uh, what he said was honestly, as Jennifer pointed out, kind of a drunken tirade. It didn't really even make any sense. But those are the dangers. That, that's the course that I followed. That's the course that I recommend that you follow. No compromise. And we'll talk to you next time.